Okay, today we are talking about some counting techniques, and we need these for probability. Um, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is called the fundamental counting principle. You are familiar with this, you've done it before, but if what it says is if there's m ways for one event to occur and n ways for a second event to occur, then all you have to do is multiply it for the total um, number of possible outcomes. So, for example, uh, if you have an ice cream shop that has three types of cones, five flavors, and four toppings, how many different uh, you know, combinations could you buy? How many different ice cream cones? Well, first you have a choice of three cones, and then you have a choice of five flavors, and then you have a choice of four toppings, and so all we have to do is multiply those together, and we get 60 uh, possible ice cream cones. Now, this is one type of cone, one flavor of ice cream, and one topping. If you start getting more flavors of ice cream and more toppings, it's a much more complicated counting problem, but for what we're doing, we're just going to keep our ice cream simple. Another way to organize our data um, is with a tree diagram. Um, and it can sometimes help out if we're having trouble thinking through, like, the logical structure of it. So, for example, if you flip a fair coin three times, we want to know the tree diagram of all possible outcomes. So, this is you. This is the starting point. And when you flip the first time, there are two paths. You could travel down, you could get a heads, or you could get a tails. So that represents our first flip. On the second flip, suppose you had flipped a heads first. Your next flip could be a heads or a tails. Or if you had flipped a tails first, your options are still heads and tails. So this represents the second flip. I don't know why that H doesn't want to finish. Whatever. All right, um, our third flip then. We are going to go off of each of these and we'll have another opportunity for a heads and tails and a heads and tails and a heads and tails and then one more heads and tails. I'll try and squeeze that in there. Oh, that H did it too. Whatever. So looking at this tree diagram, if you kind of follow the different paths down, you can get all of the possible outcomes. So like if you start down this path, heads, 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 that's one of the paths you can travel, H, H, H. Or you could have gone heads, heads, tails. Uh, or you could have gone heads, tails, heads. Or you could have gone heads, tails, tails. Um, do you guys get the idea on this? Do I have to do all the rest of them? You're going to follow these paths. But anyway, when you look at this, there are eight possible outcomes for flipping a coin. And that's really helpful when we start doing probability, like, you know, what's the probability of flipping exactly one tails? Um, you'd have a picture of all the different ways that that could happen. All right, something else that we're going to need um, very shortly is factorial. Uh, and again, I know that you've done this before and you remember it. Um, factorial is a mathematical operation. Uh, it uses an exclamation po point. Um, but what it means is you are taking, if it's 5 factorial, you're taking 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So just starting with that integer, every integer down to 1. And then you just multiply these. Um, that's 120. Uh, 3 factorial means 3 times 2 times 1, which of course is 6. And 0 factorial, um, there's not really a way to do this mathematically. You just need to know that 0 factorial is always 1. There is a factorial button on your calculator. Let's see, I have a calculator up here. There's the calculator. Um, it is the probability button. Let's see if I can point at it with you. Right there is the probability button. So if you want to do 5 factorial, you would hit 5 probability button, and then it'll appear on the screen and you'll see the factorial. This is just a picture of a calculator, not a real one, so I can't actually push the buttons. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of problems. Um, we have eight runners in the 100 meter dash. How many different ways can they finish, assuming there's no ties? So we have eight runners and we have eight spots that they're going to finish. So here's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Okay, so they're all running, they're running, they're running. Um, we have eight people that could potentially finish first. Now, one of those people finishes. So how many people are left to possibly finish second place? 
Uh, well, there's only seven, because remember, one of them's already done. And now two of them are done. So there's only six people less, left that could possibly finish next. And then five, then four, then three, then two. And by the time you get down to last place, there's only one person still running, so they have to get the last spot. And we're going to multiply all of these. Again, this is where um, the factorial button in your calculator is super helpful because you don't have to punch all those numbers in. And we get 40,320. All right, Amy, Brad, and Carly are standing in line to buy a new iPhone. List the different ways they could stand in line, okay? Now, if it were asking for how many ways can they stand in line, it would be 3 times 2 times 1, or 3 factorial, which is 6. Uh, they actually want us to list them. So, they could stand Amy, Brad, and Carly, or they could stand Amy, Carly, and Brad. That's the only ways they can stand with Amy going first. So let's let Brad go first. So Brad, Amy, Carly, and Brad, Carly, Amy. And that's all the ways they can stand with Brad first. And now Carly gets to go first. Amy, Brad, and Carly, Brad, Amy. So there's the six ways that they could actually stand. All right, there are nine players on a baseball team. And how many different ways can you make a batting order from those nine players? This is just like the 100-meter um, dash problem we just did. Okay, how many spots, how many people can you put in the first spot, uh, the very first batter? Well, there's nine of them. Now, you've already chosen a person for that first spot, so now you only have eight people for the next spot, and then seven, and then six. I don't feel like writing all these. Uh, it's going to be nine factorial, and we can do that in our calculator. Oh, let's see, how about 3, 6, 2, 8, 80. Um, we're going to show some more applications of the factorial in the next video.